Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today we're going to learn some confusing vocabulary and try to clear it up. So let's get started. Today we're looking at the differences between these three words trail, path, and pathway. They're all similar, but they're used in different ways. So let's take a closer look. First, this is a trail. She's hiking on a trail. You can also call it a path, but it's normally called a trail. But both words are used to describe this. She's hiking on the trail. Pronunciation. The TR makes a ch, -ch sound like chicken plus the R, chur, trail. Then the long A, tray, and then the dark L, o, o, tighten the tongue, trail. She's hiking on the trail. Let's practice. What is she doing? Is she hiking on the trail? That's right, she's hiking on the trail. And should she stay on the trail? That's right, she should stay on the trail. It's safer that way. And this is a similar thing, but we don't call this a trail, we call it a path. This is a garden path. It's a walkway in the garden. Sometimes it's just dirt, and sometimes you have stones. This is a path, a garden path. Let's practice. Is there a path in the garden? That's right, there's a path in the garden. Pronunciation, path. Use the short a sound like black cat, plus the th sound with air, no voice. Path. This is a garden path. Let's practice. What is this? Is this a garden path? That's right, this is a garden path. And we can use the word path when you talk about things in your life, directions you go in your life. You're not talking about a physical path or a physical trail. It's the direction in life that you choose to go. Example, he chose to be a criminal. So he chose the wrong path. Remember, choose in the present, in the past, chose. He chose the wrong path in life. He went the wrong direction in his life. Let's practice. Did he choose the wrong path in life? That's right, he chose the wrong path in life. Or I can talk about a Buddhist monk. This is a Buddhist monk, and he is on the path to enlightenment. The path to enlightenment. That's the direction he's going in his life. He's on the path to enlightenment. Let's practice. Is he on the path to enlightenment? That's right, he's on the path to enlightenment. Now let's talk about this word, pathway. You can use pathway to talk about a trail or a path, but usually we don't. We use pathway to talk about the connections in your brain. They're called neural pathways, or just pathways in your brain. They're the connections in your brain. And you can see the pathways in an MRI. This is an MRI of a brain, and you can see the pathways. There are many neural pathways in the brain. Let's practice. Can you see the pathways in the brain? That's right, you can see the pathways in the brain. Are there many pathways in the brain? That's right, there are many pathways in the brain. They're called neural pathways. And this is the most common use of the word pathway. So remember the three words, trail, path, and pathway. They're all similar, but they're used in different ways. So sometimes we say go with no to with no preposition to. For example, you can say, go on a hike, or go on a trip, go on a cruise. And with this expression, go on a wild goose chase. We use go plus preposition on. Go on a wild goose chase. What does it mean? It means to search for something that you're not going to find. It's a waste of time. You're looking for something that's not there. Maybe it doesn't exist. That's a wild goose chase. And you can use different verbs. You can use go, go on a wild goose chase. In the past, went. We went on a wild goose chase. And you can use the verb send. They sent me on a wild goose chase. They told me to go look for something that wasn't there. Let's hear some examples. If you ask me, Sam, this is a wild goose chase. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. It's possible, though it's more likely the killer's trying to send us on a wild goose chase. You're going on a wild goose chase. Why did you send me on a wild goose chase, Jack? We're on a wild goose chase. Yes. Believe me. 
Okay, I'm giving this Norman guy another 15, but I think he's got us on a wild goose chase. Example, he's a detective, and someone died, and he thinks the person was murdered. So he's looking for the killer. But in reality, the person wasn't murdered. It was an accident. So he's looking for a killer that doesn't exist. I can say he's on a wild goose chase. Or I can use the verb go. In the past went. He went on a wild goose chase, looking for this killer that didn't exist. His captain told him to go find the killer. So I can say his captain sent him on a wild goose chase. Let's practice. Is he on a wild goose chase? That's right. He's on a wild goose chase. Let's practice in the past. Did he go on a wild goose chase? That's right. He went on a wild goose chase. Looking for a killer that didn't exist. Let's practice. Did his captain send him on a wild goose chase? That's right. His captain sent him on a wild goose chase. So remember, sometimes we use go with no preposition to. Keep watching to practice with more examples of go with no preposition to. Usually, we use the connective direction to with the verb go. For example, go to New York, go to Florida, go to the store, go to the bank. But these words are special. Home, downtown, west, east, north, south, outside, inside, there. With these words, to is not necessary. Go to home is not correct. We say she is going home. He is driving west. Is she going home? That's right. She is going home. And now let's talk about these fun activities. Go shopping. Go fishing. Go dancing. Go hiking. We use a gerund after go. To is not necessary. Go to shopping is not correct. She is going shopping. I go shopping once a week. How often do you go shopping? Great job. But go shopping to the store? Or go shopping at the store. Which one is correct? In this case, we're talking about location. So we use our connector at. She's not at the bank. She's not at the library. She is at the store. So we say she's going shopping at the store. She usually goes shopping at the store near her house. The connector is at. Where is he? Is he at the store or at the lake? That's right, he is at the lake. And that's why we say he is going fishing at the lake. He always goes fishing at the lake. He likes going fishing at the lake. Do you go fishing at the lake? Does he go fishing at the lake sometimes? Great job. Where are they? They are in the forest. What are they doing there? They are going hiking in the forest. They like to go hiking in the forest. They go hiking in the forest every weekend. Do you go hiking in the forest every weekend? Do they go hiking in the forest every weekend? That's right. They go hiking in the forest every weekend. What are they doing right now? Are they going hiking in the forest? That's right. They are going hiking in the forest. Great job. They are not at school. They are not at the bank. They are at the club. Or you can say, they are in the club. Both are correct. What are they doing? They are going dancing in the club. How often do you go dancing in the club? Are you going dancing in the club tonight? Are they going dancing in the club tonight? That's right. They are going dancing in the club tonight. Great job. And now let's talk about these expressions. 
Go on vacation. Go on a trip. Go on a cruise. Go on your honeymoon. Remember, we don't say go to vacation. We say go on vacation. What is he doing? He is going on vacation. Where? He is going on vacation to Paris. Or you can say he is going to Paris on vacation. Both are correct. Are you going on vacation to Paris this summer? Is he going to Paris on vacation? That's right. He is going on vacation to Paris. Or you can say he is going to Paris on vacation. Great job. What are they doing? They are going on a road trip. Where? Where are they going on a road trip? They are going to the lake on a road trip. Or you can say they are going on a road trip to the lake. Both are correct. Let's practice. What are they doing? Are they going on a road trip? That's right. They are going on a road trip. Where are they going on a road trip? That's right. They are going to the lake on a road trip. Great job. Go on your honeymoon. Remember, honeymoon is very special. We say go on my honeymoon, go on your honeymoon, go on their honeymoon. Let's practice. Are they going on their honeymoon? That's right. They are going on their honeymoon. Where are they going on their honeymoon? That's right. They are going to San Francisco on their honeymoon. Great job. And now let's talk about how to connect two verbs. Usually, when we have two verbs, we use our connector to to connect them. For example, I want to eat. I need to go. But If you want to use another verb after go, to is not necessary. For example, let's go eat. I need to go wash my car. When my kids' room is messy and they are watching TV, I tell them, "Go clean your room." Go to clean your room is not correct. Let's practice. Do you want to go eat? That's right. I want to go eat. Did she need to go wash her car? That's right. She needed to go wash her car. What do you need to do? Do you need to go wash your car? That's right. I need to go wash my car. Great job. But remember, if the verb go has a different form, like in the past, went. We have to use connector to. Where did she go? She went to wash her car. To is necessary here, and we have to use connector to. Our first expression is, "How did it go?" If your friend had a meeting and you want to know the result of the meeting, you can ask, "How did it go?" It went great. Remember, in present go, in the past went. How did the meeting go? It went great. How did the job interview go? It didn't go well. He didn't get the job. How did the doctor's appointment go? It went great. Let's practice. How did the meeting go? Did it go well? That's right. It went great. How did the job interview go? Did it go well? Did he get the job? That's right. It didn't go well. He didn't get the job. Go bald. He's losing his hair. He's going bald. It's happening right now in his life. We say he is going bald. He's losing his hair. He is going bald. Let's practice. Is he going bald? That's right. He is going bald. I'm not going bald. Are you going bald? Great job. He is bald. He has no hair. 
He went bald in his thirties. Let's practice. Is he bald? That's right. He is bald. When did he go bald? That's right. He went bald in his thirties. When your natural hair color changes, you can say, "She is going gray." It's happening right now in her life. We use present continuous. Let's practice. Is she going gray? That's right. She is going gray. I'm not going gray. Are you going gray? Great job. She went gray in her forties. Let's practice. When did she go gray? That's right. She went gray in her forties. He can't see. He is blind. He went blind when he was a child. Let's practice. Is he blind? That's right. He is blind. When did he go blind? That's right. He went blind when he was a child. He can't hear. He is deaf. He went deaf in his seventies. Let's practice. Is he deaf? That's right. He is deaf. When did he go deaf? That's right. He went deaf in his seventies. Go bad. We use this expression when we talk about food. The cheese went bad. You can't eat the cheese. The cheese went bad. The apple went bad. Let's practice. Did the apple go bad? That's right. The apple went bad. What about the cheese? Did the cheese go bad too? That's right. The cheese went bad too. Go crazy. When someone gets angry, when someone gets mad, you can say. He went crazy. When he heard the news about his business that it wasn't doing good, he went crazy. He started yelling. He got angry. His face turned red. He went crazy when he heard the news. Let's practice. Did he go crazy when he heard the news about his business? That's right. He went crazy when he heard the news about his business. Or you can say he went ballistic. He went crazy. He went ballistic. He started yelling. He got very angry. His face turned red. He went ballistic. Let's practice. What happened when he heard the news about his business? Did he go ballistic? That's right. He went ballistic when he heard the news about his business. Our next expression is "go wrong." Yesterday he had a tough day. He woke up late. He had a flat tire. He got stuck in traffic. He was late for work. Everything went wrong yesterday. Let's practice. He had a tough day yesterday. Did everything go wrong? That's right. Everything went wrong. Or you can say go downhill. When things are not getting better, you can say everything is going downhill. For example, yesterday he woke up late, and everything went downhill from there. He had a flat tire. He got stuck in traffic. He was late for work. Go downhill. Let's practice. What happened yesterday? He woke up late. And did everything go downhill from there? That's right. Everything went downhill from there. Go blank. We use this expression when we talk about computer screens, or when we talk about our mind. His teacher asked him a question, and he couldn't think of the right answer because his mind went blank. Let's practice. Did his mind go blank? That's right. 
his mind went blank when his teacher asked him a question. Yesterday, my computer screen went blank. I couldn't see any numbers. I couldn't see any letters. My computer screen went blank. The screen was black and I couldn't see anything. Did your computer screen go blank? Great job. When someone gets very excited, you can say, go wild. The crowd went wild when the team won the game. Let's practice. Did the crowd go wild when the team won the game? That's right. The crowd went wild when the team won the game. And our last expression is go well with something. For example, the couch goes well with the curtains. They don't match. They're different colors. But they look good together. The couch goes well with the curtains. What do you think? Do you think the couch goes well with the curtains? That's right. The couch goes well with the curtains. Thank you for watching. And if you want to learn English and practice speaking English, subscribe to our channel. Bye!